So hello, welcome to the second lecture of module six, where we'll see in particular about capacitive transducer. So in the last class, we have seen the definition of a transducer and we have seen the classification of various transducers. And one classification, the last classification that we have seen uh, that that was about transduction, classification based on transduction. So today we'll see a special transducer that is based on capacitive transduction. So they are called capacitive transducers. So just to remember, what is a capacitor? So capacitor is actually an element which is having two conductive plates separated by a dielectric medium. So these all things we know from the basic electronics course and uh, this is actually the equation of parallel plate capacitance that is C is equal to epsilon A by D where epsilon you all know that is the permittivity and epsilon is nothing but the product of relative permittivity and permittivity of space space. So and then we have A which is actually this is very important that is A is overlapping area of plates in meter square and D is a distance of separation between the two plates. So area of overlap is nothing but this length L multiplied by this width W and this is D that separation of the between the plates which is separated by a dielectric medium, some dielectric medium. So we so how does a transducer trans, uh, capacity transducer work? So it can work in three types, three modes that is one is it can have it can vary the area of overlap. So by changing the the area of overlap you can actually vary the capacity that is by changing the area you can actually vary the capacity that is you can see a linear relationship capacitance is directly proportional to area of overlap so you can see two types of capacitors one is cylindrical capacitors and the other is parallel plate capacitor so this is the cylindrical capacitor where we have two plates uh, separated by a dielectric medium and instead of L we have X here which is a variable so if this is the displacement if I if I move the plate the, the upper plate from right to left then X varies so X increases when I move and when there is a displacement from left to so right, from right to left so based on that you can vary the area of overlap now you can see that the area of overlap instead of W into L is W into X so likewise you can see a cylindrical capacitor where you have two concentric cylinders where D2 is the inner diameter of the outer cylinder and D1 is the outer diameter of the inner cylinder. So how much by how much length the inner cylinder coincides overlaps the outer cylinder will actually determine the capacity. So if these if is if if the distance of overlap is of only x then that is that will determine the capacitance. So by varying the value of x in this case you can actually increase or decrease the capacitance so you can in general you can write it as epsilon a by d where a is nothing but instead of l into w we can have x into w where x is a variable and the maximum value of x is l so if you want to find the sensitivity that is how does the capacitor varies with respect to change in x then you have to partially find the derivative of capacitance with respect to x and that is nothing but epsilon w by D. You can see that epsilon is a constant, W is a constant and D is also fixed. So that sensitivity is a constant. That is why I told that capacitance is having a linear relationship. That is capa capacitance is directly proportional to the displacement X. Now what is the case of the cylindrical capacitance? So here the cylindrical capacitance, this is the equation you have learned from basic courses. Now instead of small d here we have X where X is actually the variable quantity or which point which shows the distance of overlap. Now we will see the next type that is that is the, the characteristics. So if you see the characteristics this is for the parallel plate capacitance that is if you increase the displacement the capacitance also increases that is area will increase so that the capacitance is increasing. Now what is the now instead of now what is the case for now you can have displacement rotational displacement or angular displacement also for that you can use 
another sort of capacitance that is a circular capacitance that is you have you are having two semicircular plates and and theta shows the overlap of these plates so one plate is fixed and other plate is allowed to move so if the overlap the what is the maximum overlap maximum overlap obviously it will be 180 degree and if overlap is theta then that will determine the area of overlap so in general as you know that is epsilon a by d so instead of a we can substitute it as pi r square the area of overlap and pi stands for 180 degree and that that shows that if it is pi then the movable plate is completely overlapping the fixed plate and if it is not overlapping by 180 degree some angle less than 180 degree say it has theta then that is epsilon theta r square by d so this capacitance value will surely depend on the overlap that is angular overlap that is theta so here also you can see that we find the sensitivity that is partially the finding the derivative of capacitance with respect to theta then that this will be epsilon r square by 2d so again you can see that epsilon is a constant r is the radius of the plate that is a constant 2d is also a constant so here also sensitivity is a constant so the variation is a linear variation that is why you get a linear characteristics so you can see the graph that is angular di displacement if it is maximum so what is the maximum ang angular displacement maximum angular displacement is 180 degree where at the point you will get the maximum capacitance so uh, always for determination of parameter variation we always prefer a linear relationship so this method of transducer is very important that is just giving a linear relationship and then the next way that is transducers using change in distance between plates that's another way so you'll see that that is again the same concept one plate is fixed and the other plate is allowed to move where you are varying the value of d so if you are varying the value of d and we we we, we instead of uh, marking it as d we replace d by a variable quantity x where x is allowed to move that is the distance between the two places moving with respect to displacement so we know that c is equal to epsilon a by d from that itself we can see that capacitance is having an inverse relationship between d and c so if x increases obviously capacitance increases x increases capacitance decreases and if, if x decreases then capacitance increases that is if x decreases then the this distance decreases the capacitance increases if x is increasing that is displacement is to the towards the right then d increases thereby capacitance decreases so that is why we have an inverse relationship so we can see the characteristics from that we can see that there is an inverse relationship but that is high is slightly hyperbolic function that is it's not it's ultimately non-linear in characteristics so always we prefer linear characteristics so how to make it linear see one thing is that you can make the distance very small so if you if the if you make the distance of separation with the plates very small what happens see if air is a dielectric medium between the two plates then air has a dielectric strength that is it has a breakdown limit of 3 kV per millimeter what is the meaning of 3 kV per millimeter that is if a distance between the two plates is 1 millimeter and if you apply a voltage stress of 3 kV across the plates then it will the air in between will break down it will lose its dielectric strength and the air will ionize and it will act as a conductor so the capacitor will ceases will will not act as a capacitor so we have to consider that in mind while fixing the distance between the two plates when we have air in between as a light electric medium so one option is that so air if we have as a dielectric medium you can expect a hyperbolic function a non-linear function so one thing is that you can have some other medium as dielectric for example you can have mica as dielectric so that you can ensure more or less a linear variation for some portion of the graph so one option is that you can have you can choose a very a different uh, dielectric medium having a dielectric high dielectric constant that is one way of uh, having a linear capacitance and another thing is that this capacitance is is actually used where the variation between the two plates the distance of separation of two plates is very small 
okay so where so if you if you if the changes is small between the plates if the displacement is small then you can prefer this method so i'll show one example that is that is it is actually used as a pressure transducer that is you are having two quartz diaphragms which are coated by silver so it is ultimately two plates which are silvered quartz diaphragms so why do you prefer a quartz di diaphragm so quartz is having a very low mechanical hysteresis so what is the meaning of low mechanical hysteresis that is why see the thing is that hysteresis means the lag which takes after deformation so if you have a compression how much time it will take to come back to its original position or if you have an expansion how much time it takes to regain its initial initial strength so that is all about hysteresis that is so mechanical hysteresis if it is low then after de deformation it will attain its initial position very quickly so that is why we always prefer a quartz diaphragm so silvered quartz diaphragm is preferred because silver will act as a conductor we know that capacitance plates should be a conductor so so if we have a small pressure change these diaphragms will pick that and that small pressure change will cause very small changes in distance so that it will change the value of capacitance we will get a corresponding variation in electrical quantity so the first scheme that is variation of overlapping area is ultimately used as a displacement transducer whereas the second scheme that is variation of distance between the two plates is actually used as a pressure sensor and then we'll move on to the next one that is sorry one more thing i'll, I'll show that see now i i don't see that in my frame that is why see next one is variation of dielectric constant so i have i had that figure in my uh, slides but currently now it's not being seen so i'll discuss this topic in the next class where we we use the variation of dielectric constant as a liquid level uh, transducer okay so we'll see that in the next class so today we have discussed about two schemes of capacity transducers that is one is about variation of overlapping area that will act as a displacement transducer and then we have another type of type of transducer that is by variation of distance of the separation which is usually employed as a pressure transducer so thank you so much we'll see the next this type as well as the next types of transducers in the following lectures thank you for your patient listening